So sometimes you just have to stop by the roadside and take the shot because it's just there. So I've stopped by and you can see out there I have a windmill, wind turbine, a couple of boats and there is actually a seagull sitting on one of those boats. Really, really nice little scene. It's complete utter daylight. I'm shooting, well, I can't really say I'm shooting straight towards the sun because it's <laughs> all the way up there. But I am having a lot of glitter on the water from the sun, but uh, I think it, it's quite a nice shot. The only downside is that there's a little bit too many clouds there in the background of the windmill. So I'll have to zoom out a little bit to include a little bit more of the sky. As for me to be able to get some of the, the blue in the sky and not just clouds. But yeah, <laughs> nice, nice little scene. So there is this ongoing debate, I guess, which is kind of, I don't know, I think it's a little bit of an obnoxious and unnecessary debate, whether you take a photo or you make a photo. And if it's even possible to make a photo, is it still a photo or is it then an image or a picture or whatever? <laughs> Right now I've stopped by the roadside, more or less, and I'm taking a photo. See, I'm taking a photo. I put up my tripod, put on the long lens, and then I'm photographing in this direction up here, up to this little tree. I'm using the tractor tracks in the fields in front of it. And the idea is, of course, to just zoom in as you can see right here, really nice composition. So I simply just dial in my settings, F16, that gives me 1 16th of a second shutter speed and ISO 100. And then when I press the shutter, one would argue I take the photo. The question is, where is the line between taking a photo and making a photo? Because making a photo is arguably a little bit more deliberate, I would say, if we do want to make a distinction. So if I put on the polarizing filter, so you can see it makes quite a substantial difference to the photo. And I'm deliberate about using the polarizing filter. And on top of that, with this photo here, I also have to focus tag it to get the tractor tracks in focus those closest to me and those closer to the tree. So even though I'm shooting at f16, I need to focus tag. And then I need to take two photos and blend them and also need the polarizing filter. So am I now being so much deliberate that I'm actually making a photograph rather than taking a photograph? Now, I will discuss this throughout the day and just come with a lot of thoughts, inputs to this. Uh, and then I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this subject down in the comments or is it just completely nonsense and let's just press the shutter. If you want to learn how I compose my photos, be sure to get my two ebooks. 
They are full of all the different compositional tools I use in the field to recognize compositions and arguably make my photos. Both ebooks are easy to read with minimal text and many photos to emphasize my points. A continuous thank you to all of you who buys the ebooks and gives them all the 5 star reviews. It means a lot. There are links to both of them in the description of this video. So another roadside stop here. Come by this little beautiful church located on a hill and then I have a lot of rapeseed right here in front and a blue sky. Very beautiful. If we are to ever talk about taking a photo, this must be it. Just stop at the roadside, go out, set up the camera, dial in your settings and then just shoot. That's the scene. I guess that's taking the photo. <laughs> So I'm driving quite a lot around and it looks as if I'm finding new places all the time, but I'm really not. But when I do, it's so awesome. So this is probably one of the best lone trees with the rapeseed field in front I've found yet. And with some puffy clouds up behind. Very simple to compose. Simply just moving the tree around in different positions. but. I keep coming back to just like a central composition like this. I've also been a little bit closer where I introduce a little bit more of the rapeseed field. So just like before, the question is whether or not to use the polarizing filter. I'm not sure if it has too strong of an effect, but due to the low clouds behind the tree, it is actually not making the tree too dark. So it is still standing out as you can see here and really darkening down that blue sky. I think <laughs> this here is probably one of the best lone tree yeah, rapeseed fields I've got. I've just made a video about like capturing the essence of Denmark. I would say it's probably not getting closer to this. This is absolutely stunning and I would argue this is more of taking a photo than making a photo. So I made my way to one of my favorite scenes from last year that gave me one of my favorite photos from last year. This big, beautiful lone oak standing out here in the field. The difference is that the field right now is green compared to last year where it was brown. And right now the clouds are eh, more or less the same as what I got last year. Nice and moody. And that's the exact reason why I'm here. I would also like to photograph this with the blue sky. But right now we have some beautiful texture rich clouds or they were a little bit more texture rich before when I got the photo. But right now the thing is about taking or making a photo is that yes, I am taking the photo, I go out, I put the composition in and I put the settings in and then I take the photo. But it's a very deliberate process. I know where the photo is. I wait for some interesting conditions. So is that where you make the photo? 
the thing is, in the end, it doesn't really matter if we say take or make the photo, but it, there, there's still, there must be some kind of arbitrary line in the sand. And I'm not sure where it is. Obviously, it doesn't matter for the end product. The end product will be as it is. And I don't mind doing a whole lot of post-processing to get to that end product. So, this here is actually another day than what you've seen in the rest of this video. So, I will come back to the end of the day that started out in this video. It's so confusing making, making videos sometimes. I did mention post-processing, and for me post-processing is definitely a very deliberate process where it's easy to argue that you make the photo as you're doing many different adjustments after you've arguably taken the photo. So is the process of editing the thing that makes you make the photo rather than taking the photo? At the very least for when we talk about the end product. After all, the edited photos are very different from the straight out of camera photos, which again are very different from what I saw with my own eyes. Throughout the sunny weather day, I got so many roadside photos, which surprisingly turned out way better than I expected. Both this minimalist vertical photo with a tractor track and lone cloud and this small series of horizontal landscape photos that I also find to describe the Danish summer landscape really well. Fields, trees and long rolling hills. I do like both the photo with the tree trees and the one with the single bushy tree, but it is definitely this one with the foreground rapeseed field, green hills, tractor tracks and small topping of a white cloud that makes it for me. It's so graphical and also looks like a landscape or backdrop from Lego or Playmobil. As you can see, all these photos, despite being single frames, really need some editing for them to work. However. Even though I like all these photos, I did get one photo this day that I personally think is one of my very best in 2022, and it is this one. I absolutely love this drone photo. Everything from the small birds in the background over the abstract shapes of the elongated tide pools, reflection of the sky and clouds in the water to the colors and with myself and my shadow in the bottom of the photo to give a sense of context, scale, an anchor point and help breaking the pattern of the abstract shapes. Eame. Credits worth where credit is due. This photo is also inspired by Christian Faber, who got a similar photo with the same tide pool phenomenon in another location in Denmark. Be sure to follow his work on Instagram. It is also important to show just how powerful editing and if nothing else, cleaning up your photo can be. Yes, I'll say the 45 minutes of clone stamping out all the debris was very much worth it. The photo wouldn't work half as good if it wasn't for the cleanup and increased contrast. And this is exactly where I reached the conclusion that I don't really care whether it is called taking a photo or making a photo, because I wouldn't change my process anyway. My photos get exactly the amount of love and care in the editing process as I think they need to work. No more, no less. Some photos get a lot of editing, while others get less. 
And if you want to learn all these kinds of editing techniques, be sure to enroll in my huge Photoshop for Landscape Photographers course. The course is designed progressively, so it starts out in the easy end and advances to the harder techniques. It is well organized, so you can always go back and revisit the parts you find harder or jump forth if there are parts you already know. There is a coupon code in the description of the video, which you can use to save a bit of money. So guess what I have for you for sunset? Yeah, <laughs> you guessed right. Another lone tree! So I scouted this one last year and uh, I have, yeah, it is in the sunset direction, the sun sets about here. And I have these absolutely incredible feathery clouds tonight. I so hope that they will catch some light when the sun is dipping down, catch some light here. But in all honesty, I am not sure. The upper clouds behind these feathery ones have some color right now. And I can see out here, there's some color here <clears throat> and there's some color up here. But I fear that the reason why these here are dark is because they are basically behind this small cloud down here. But if the sun comes a bit further down, it may come underneath this one and cast some light up here. So that's what I'm hoping for. I have my camera all the way down here so I can get a little bit of foreground, a little bit of depth. And as you can see, to catch the entire cloud structure, I have zoomed quite a lot out so that the tree is rather small in the screen. But uh, it is what it is. I'm bracketing this one just to get some information in, in the foreground. But uh, yeah, again, I think this one counts as taking a photo. So uh, I have to put it together in editing. Maybe it's the editing part that makes it making a photo. But here it is. As always, I would highly appreciate a like. Let me know your thoughts on taking versus making a photo, and for the sake of humanity, keep it sober. <laughs> also, be sure to check out the links in the description below if you want to learn even more. Thanks as always for watching along.